qui arrive. Merci beaucoup de, de votre présence. Uh, thank you very much for, for your presence. A few minutes ago, the, the Sudan People's Liberation Movement North, as PLM, signed uh, an action plan with the United Nations to end and prevent the recruitment and use of children in conflict. Um, I just would like to, to let you know that this press conference will have two sequences, two uh, distinct sequences. First, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce you to uh, Ms. Leila Zerbi, uh, Special Representative for the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict, and Mr. Abdullah Fadil, who is our UNICEF representative in Sudan. So Ms. Zerugi and Mr. Fadil will, will briefly share with you uh, their main remarks for a few minutes on this signature, and then they will take your question. Your question. So that's the first sequence. And in the second part of this press conference, we will uh, welcome uh, Mr. Malik Agar, who is the SPLM North Chairman. Mrs. Zerugi, uh, you have the floor. And uh, just uh, last word, Mrs. Zerugi, uh, we'll be happy to take uh, your questions and we'll be able to answer either in English and French, and, and Mr. Uh, Fadil will answer in English. Thank you very much so once again. Right yeah, yeah, after. Yeah. It's coming just after. Yeah. You, you understood it well. The first sequence, Mr. Uh, Rudy and Mr. Fadil, and second sequence just after Mr. Thank you. And Mr. Rudy, you have the floor. I will not ask you to be more clear from you, but I would like to say that this is a, 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 a signature of an action plan is something that we welcome very much because it's uh, um, in the engagement of parties to conflict, either government forces or uh, 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 non-state actors that allow us to uh, have a meaningful uh, action on the ground to protect children affected by armed conflict. As you know, my mandate covers the six grave violations that affect children in conflict uh, particularly uh, um, uh, one of the first that was identified and triggered policy was the recruitment and use of children, but still we have also killing and maiming at Axon schools and hospitals, abduction, denial of humanitarian access, and uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, sexual violence. So these are the six clear violations that we cover. Uh, the SPL in uh, signed the action plan for the violation that uh, um, he was uh, listed for recruitment and use of children, but also in the action plan they committed to protect children against other violations, which means that we will work with them on all uh, uh, violations that could affect children in conflict, and I'm pleased to be here to witness this signing this, of course, between UNICEF and the um, residential coordinator and UNICEF representative who was uh, representing them and I signed a great missing action plan and I'm happy to answer your question. Good morning. Um, thank you for coming. Um, the, the remark I just made I will repeat. Um, Sixty years ago, the General Assembly asked member states uh, to celebrate uh, and have an event called Universal Children's Day. Um, Sixty years on, um, we continue to struggle um, as a world community to uh, take care of the uh, well-being and welfare of children. Um, today, I think, is an important day in the sense that uh, after the government of Sudan has signed an action plan uh, related to the recruitment uh, of prohibition of recruitment of children, that um, a significant uh, armed group has signed. Um, Sudan has already a uh, number of issues stacked against it. Uh, Sudan faces children who are out of school, uh, children who are malnourished, um, children who actually struggle on a daily basis uh, with basic requirements and needs. Uh, fighting in wars that is not theirs is not uh, something that they want to do with people or everything else. Uh, we're happy uh, that this has taken place today with the leadership of uh, uh, the SRSG Labour Zabudi. We have committed to helping SPL and North um, in making sure that they uh, adhere to, to their obligations, to assist them uh, with the results of the action plan. 
um, with the technical knowledge that's needed, with the resource mobilization that's needed. We will be with them along uh, this process until they're able to uh, reach uh, the goals that they have set for themselves. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, the intention is to be the listening, because that I think, uh, will be the ultimate goal. Um, so, um, as I said, it's a, it's a significant uh, day. Um, we still have a number of other armed groups that also need to come on board. Um, and we're hoping that they will come on board soon. Um, so I, I thank you for coming here, and we're ready to take any questions that we may have. Thank you very much. And yes, I would just ask you to please to mention for that uh, uh, there will be your, the name of your weekend. Thank you very much. And yes. You know, we have not been able to uh, uh, access the areas under control of SPL and North for quite some time. The areas uh, called the Noble Mountains and the Blue Nile, uh, we have not had actual access for almost five to six years. So we do not have exact figures and numbers, uh, unfortunately. Um, and by the time this thing, this thing took place, uh, it's some years back. So I would rather uh, not give figures that are maybe not necessarily accurate. Did you get them? You did that last? Of course, we asked and we are we're engaging. And the whole idea about uh, committing to this signature is that uh, any child who's been recruited would be demobilized and, and not be. Uh, but also, uh, remember, we've been in discussion with uh, Esme and North almost for at least four years. Uh, the first time that uh, Mr. Rugi met uh, with Chairman Agar in New York. Uh, and they have actually been doing a number of steps. So, actually, today is not uh, uh, just a you know, one off, it's actually the beginning of a, now the actual. Um, implementation of this process, but it has started and had discussions have been going for quite some time. So we are confident that uh, uh, we will attain uh, the goals set forth. I mean, again, it's not us, but it's actually the SPLM law that needs to uh, undertake the action plan. Maybe, maybe just to complement. Uh, uh, it's the implementation of the action plan, the access to the area is part of the action plan, and the screening of, of the troops that will allow us to identify uh, if still children, the, 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 the SPN and not said that they already uh, are working because they signed the deed commitment for the Geneva call, and they are, so we will see when we start implementing when we, they have access to the area and when we uh, uh, screen the troops and we we'll see uh, how many children are still there, you know that what is prohibited is not only the recruitment, but also the use of children, even in support role. So, uh, and sometimes with armed groups that are embedded in the community, that's the major challenge, is to ensure that children are not even used in support role, even if this support role is not, is not to say uh, 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 military operation, in military operation. Uh, yeah, Lisa Schlein, Voice of America. I don't know where to begin. Um, how many armed groups are there, and why is it that the SPLM North has decided to uh, actually cooperate with the United Nations in demobilizing children? And then you talk about an action plan. What are the elements of the action plan? What actually happens in this action plan? And then you also spoke about uh, well, the mobilization of the children. It's a big part. That's part of it. Uh, what happens to the children afterwards when they when they are released? First of all, uh, I would like to emphasize that in, in, in Sudan, in general, we have SPLM North in, in uh, uh, the southern uh, uh, part of the country, in uh, Nuba Mountain, but also in Minyan. And then we have the three armed groups that uh, 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 are still uh, uh, active in uh, that country. And that's SLA, uh, uh, SLA, uh, and Jen. 
So these are the three. We are working with, with all the four armed groups. Uh, SPLN, well, you know, SPLN North uh, 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 is engaging today, formally signing the action plan, but we were working with them before. We have the same engagement with the three other armed groups that are in that group. I met with them in, uh, uh, just last year, I was with them uh, three all together uh, in, uh, uh, um, in Austria. Uh, having a meeting, they sign a joint declaration together. We are finalizing uh, uh, action plan with them. Uh, we're, uh, already we have, uh, um, uh, uh, it was in 2007, we are working with them. So I think we have uh, the cooperation working with these armed groups, the difficulties that we have sometimes with the access. There are the four armed groups are listed for recruiting the needs of children with the government of South Sudan also. So we are working both with the government and with the armed groups. Of course, for uh, the why we are today engaging only with SPL and North, because as you know, those who are in Darfur, they have also as partner UNAMI. So we do it with UNICEF, UNAMI, myself, when it comes to working with the armed groups that are in Darfur. That's why we, we always work with the UNICEF, with them, instead of not in, in, uh, and, um, on us and for them, for uh, for that who in a meeting work also. Uh, because they are on the, there and they are the ones who will implement. Now, what, what is the element in the action plan? The element in the action plan, the action plan is a request from the Security Council. It's mandatory for parties that were listed for one of the violations that trigger for listing. And as I said, five trigger for listing. Six violations that I mentioned, five of them, killing and many, attacks on schools and hospitals, sexual violence, recruitment, abduction, they trigger for listing. So when you are listed for one or more uh, uh, violation, then the, the action plan, in the action plan we put the elements that allow us to end the violation and to prevent it. So for a government, it's to enact laws, it's to put the laws in conformity with international law, it's to take, to prosecute those who commit the violation, it's to, that, that's a government that have broader responsibility. And all state actors, their responsibility is, one, to ensure that their file and ranks are informed of the commitment. That's command orders that go along the file and ranks to inform everyone that this violation is not accepted, that they have to stop it if they are involved in that. Then they have to take the necessary measure to address the uh, 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 accountability. If some of their, of their element commits the violation, then they put disciplinary measures and sanctions that allow uh, for accountability to end the violation. Third is to screen with the United Nations their rank, files and ranks and to ensure if children are identified, they are separated and they are released from the armed groups and of course handed over to protection actors uh, that could be uh, of course, UNICEF is uh, uh, on the top of it, but it could be also NGOs working with UNICEF, it could be other, uh, um, uh, other uh, UN invo involved, like for example, in Darfur, in the the involved, child protection from UNAMI, that will handle uh, the reintegration of children in their community. That's a program that we, and I will give the floor for that to uh, uh, Abdul to explain uh, this segment because they are the one in charge of it. Okay. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I think that was a comprehensive uh, response. Just a quick uh, Recently we had uh, 21 children who were uh, captured as a result of fighting. Uh, and so what, in, what is involved in uh, making sure these children are reintegrated into society it includes uh, psychosocial support, uh, it includes uh, rehabilitation, it includes uh, uh, sometimes even putting children back to school. Uh, but again, most importantly, tracing back to their families. Uh, 
Uh, I think at the moment, uh, uh, I think it's just yesterday, the day before, already we had most of those children already being uh, put back into their communities. Uh, and again, UNICEF uh, is uh, working closely with the, the uh, National Commission of Child Welfare and Sudan to make sure this takes place. Uh, so there are a number of activities that, that does take place. Just one point, uh, uh, it was not a question to, to, to answer. In terms of numbers, there is a report uh, that comes out yearly, and sometimes there's also country reports that will be coming out. Uh, and so I don't want to uh, preempt that report. I think it will come out in due time. And that report will have the details of numbers, years, and so forth and so forth. So I think uh, that report is being worked on by the SRSG. So I think uh, we will wait for that. Um, may I follow up? I mean, on, on the numbers that uh, Dr. Ahmed mentioned, well, when it comes out, it won't do us any good for right now, but do you have any kind of a guesstimate in terms of, maybe not for the SBLM North, but for all of the four uh, groups, okay, do you know the ages? Are there girls that are involved in, uh, are part of um, the children that have been recruited, perhaps not fighting, but as sexual, used as sexual slaves? or? Uh, as uh, in, in, in other ways, if you could answer those questions. And then you said that you are finalizing the action plan with the three other groups. So do you have any idea when, uh, when that might actually occur? Uh, first of all, with regard to the number that I mentioned, uh, we what, we what we receive as information, if you don't have full access, you cannot confirm the number. Unless you have people that are cooperating with you, but cooperating in good faith, allowing you to access their troops, what we receive is what is visible, what is seen, what when we encounter a child, when a child is arrested, when a child is injured, when a child is killed and returned to the family. So this is, uh, for me, I will uh, trust the SPNM law. Uh, we will assess, of course, the level of cooperation, the level of access, the level of opening to us, because we are not, I don't want one, one, one party to conflict, is ready to cooperate, is ready to stop the violation. I would like to encourage them to stop the violation, move forward, rather than uh, coming uh, 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 on uh, blaming them. Uh, even if, uh, we, because I always say that the listing is not a list of shame, it's a call for action. If people don't act, then we name and shame. But if they agree, because sometimes they also are, sometimes they are not aware, sometimes they don't know uh, uh, how to deal with the, with, the, with the children that are surrounding them in a context that is not always easy, so I give always the doubt, and I consider that let us work and see what will happen. So I cannot answer question in number. I know that we have children who are involved. The SPLM is not denying it. It's to know how we deal with this, how we explain what is permitted according to international law, what is not, to ensure that children are not associated, not only recruited, but even not associated. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing is about about the whether the girls the other uh, and we, the, and we, the we, ages we the ages is under eighteen for us children involved in the eighteen it they are children they have fifteen they have sixteen Sudan committed to eighteen age for recruitment. So for us, under 18 is the age that we consider uh, uh, I mean, already a child. Uh, for me, we don't have a, a, a huge number of recruitment in Sudan, to make it clear, either for armed groups or for the government. It's not a country where we have uh, hundreds of children involved. We knew that children are involved, but if we compare with the other situation, uh, we don't have uh, uh, such a huge number, so that's why we think that we can achieve uh, results with the commitment and the engagement of the party. 
and putting in place the prevention, filling the gaps, helping, uh, for example, for the age verification, because if you are in an area where you don't have a birth registration that is universal, then it's easy for children that don't have opportunities sometimes even to join from their own uh, finding you know, an alternative uh, uh, for them. So that's why I, I think that um, we will see uh, when we have full access to identify how many were involved. The other issue with regard to, to girls, again, we, have, we, we don't have numbers to say how many girls are involved because we don't know how many boys. But as I said, it's not uh, according to what we have information that we access for the years that we are following with this conflict. It's a not a huge number, but still children are involved. Now, with regard to uh, why, when you will, we will, uh, uh, will sign with the other groups, the argument is it's just that we have to finalize the agreement. We need to ensure that in an action plan we have all the elements that allow us to uh, monitor, to have the full access, to separate the children, to access the area where the troops are deployed. So that's why we are working, and I think it will be very soon. I mean, one child is one too many, to be honest. Uh, what we can tell you is the numbers that have been falling over the last two, three years. Actually, that's a fact. Uh, so, uh, but we don't the, have full but, access. But we don't have full access, but in terms of what we, what we know, it has turned downwards. Again, because of the discussion <laughs> and the engagement that uh, Yeah, and also was with news agency a kind of follow-up on that. Um, I was wondering, did you get any quarantine from Malikaga today for uh, full access to the to the region? Uh, did you promise you something? And then what could be for you the reasonable uh, horizon for the listing of the SPL? And can we already estimate where that could be? Uh, first of all, I, uh, with regard to the last question, it depends on, as you said, we, we are talking about the full access. Because we cannot uh, uh, consider <coughs> uh, a party uh, finalizing action plan, because that's what we can do it in one year if, if there is full commitment and we have full access. We need it with charge in one year, for example. Uh, it could take more. Uh, we have countries that uh, we have parties that signed action plan for years and, and, and yet still on the list, and we are not satisfied with what they are doing either because we continue to find children in their final ranks. And I, I always say, unless you close the gaps to make sure that children will not find their way to your high ranks and are not involved, we cannot consider that uh, the action plan is fulfilled. So it depends on the cooperation. It depends on uh, allowing us to verify that what was done is really done properly, that no child is, not, is, uh, is no more allowed to access or to be associated, to be involved. It, it, um, it depends on actions that are taken against those who commit this within the, the armed group. So that's what we, uh, what we do. The access, of course, is part is in, in, in the action plan for both parties, for the government, in the action plan of the government. We also put it not only to access areas that are in the control of the government, but also to allow for access in areas that are in, control, in, the, in the control of armed groups from the government side. And then we have the same uh, uh, commitment from, the, from armed groups to ensure that they allow our people on the ground, UNICEF and their partners, to access the area, to access the file, to, access, to have the investigation, no retaliation against those who come and, and, and testify, action taken, as I said. So that's, that's for me, uh, um, how we can assess. And it's not the first time on that to happen. This, this mandate has 20 years. We have 59 armed groups and government forces that are on our agenda. We have uh, a party that were listed, uh, government forces and armed groups, even in Sudan. 
that were delisted because they finalized their action plan or their end the violation. Even uh, so, we, it's not something new that we are discovering or opening the Pandora. And we don't know how to. Do it. We know we know how to deal with that. Did you get some warranties today from uh, Mr. Aguilar? You will, you can talk to him. This is in the in in the action plan. Yeah, but there is no schedule right, in the action plan. What do you mean? I mean, he, he could have promised you promised you today to to give you an access in the next three months or no, no, six we'll months. Start, or... We'll start. We'll start immediately. Immediately. Oh, yeah. The implementation will start immediately. And, and that we've agreed on operational modalities. Uh, uh, in, in the context of uh, conflict and fighting, uh, for instance, in the government case, we say 48 hours of access. In the case of you know, areas where you have no access, when you can only reach, you need different kind of modality. So it depends, different groups have different, uh, but by signing, that means we have already started the action plan today. Mm. But does that mean that you're going to go to the new mountains uh, in the next... Uh, the, only way to monitor, the only way to monitor and verify ultimately is to have that access. Yeah, but are you yourself going to go there uh, in the next weeks? Not only I'm going for that, but there are also other important issues that we need to go for there. For five, six years, we have not accessed that area with polio vaccines. We need to access for nutrition. So it's not only about this, but there are other, as I mentioned, significant issues that exist that we need access for. Yeah, but are you yourself going to go there? Of course I will go. I, I mean, I go to, uh, just for your information, as I, I go back here, I land in Khartoum Friday, Saturday I'm going to the Mazin, uh, Sinar, uh, by road uh, as well. So, of course, I, uh, I go and I don't only wear suits, but I also hit the ground. But when will you go well, to well, start well. implementing the action plan and to look at the recruitment of children? When will you go to do that? Next week? Tomorrow? This afternoon after the press conference? I, I, think, I, think, I think we should not trivialize. Uh, I'm not trivializing. What we're talking it's about. A serious yes, it's actually it's a serious question. That's why I think it's, it's important not to say. Uh, if you know the context of Sudan, if you know, I just mentioned that for five, six years we have not had access to some of the areas with polio vaccines, right? So I think it's important to note um, whenever we take uh, move around, we take risks with our staff uh, in their own personal lives. Uh, we've had staff members killed, UN officers uh, killed. So, we will access, I mean, the government we started with last March, uh, the government of Sudan. Um, we've done a number of things with the government. So it takes time. Uh, so it would be disingenuous for me to say here that it will take one week or five days. We're starting the process today. As soon as we have uh, evidence, access, information, we will start the requirements to have the access to those areas. <coughs> and uh, I can assure you, uh, we will give them the notice immediately and we will try to grow there as well as we can. One last question, please. Uh, Taha Yusuf, Middle East Media. Who is the United Nations implementation of uh, action plan? Okay. Who is following this? It's the country task force. Because this is, as I said, this is a request from the Security Council. The Security Council put in place the tools, the mechanisms, and uh, the framework. So we, uh, when we talk about action plan, it's not something that we decided uh, uh, together just to do it. It's something that is required for the delisting process. Uh, uh, those who follow up on, the, those who monitor uh, the violation, the progress, the engagement, are the task force. And the task force is co-chaired in every country by the highest representative of the United Nations in the country, plus the representative of UNICEF. That's the task force. The task force are the member of child protection <coughs> in the United Nations, uh, 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 from UNICEF, from other, uh, other uh, and even NGO could, could be involved. So we work, we work with... Do you have the, the name of the country? The name of the country. Which country? Task force. The no, task force it's, it's, it's for Sudan, yeah. task force for Sudan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There are, are child protection actors operating in Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, you have another task force, for example, operating in that field. Uh, so that's the task force that report to me. That's how we have uh, uh, um, we have an annual report. For example, 
it hijacked Sudan. We have an annual report of Sudan. We have every three months a global horizontal road where that we present to the Security Council on the evolution in, um, uh, of the situation of children affected by conflict in the country. And then I am working now on finalizing a full report on Sudan that covered the period from 2011 till today. So that's, that's